Hey guys, so I read your comments and I agree. Redux is definitely overkill for this project. So I thought, why not? This will be a good learning experience. I'm gonna show you guys how to do the exact same thing that we did with Redux, uh, two different ways. The first is with Apollo link state. This was highly requested. And then also how to do this without any state management library. Um, because really for this project, we don't need it. We don't need it. Um, but it's a good idea if you're making a bigger project that you'll probably have uh, things you'll need to use. So using Apollo link state or Redux is nice. So what I'm going to do is basically just go back in time like we never even did uh, Redux. So I could either just you know take Redux out of the project, um, but instead what I'm going to do is just go back a couple commits. So I'm currently on branch 10. Um, this is before we added Redux. But unfortunately, we're also missing a couple other pieces of code that don't have to do with Redux that we added. Now, the back end, we can keep the same. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the stuff right now that we are missing, which is just a few pieces of code. And then we are going to go ahead and see how you can add Apollo link state to this. And so I'm going to create a new base branch. So I'm on branch 10 right now. So if you want to follow along, I'm about to create a new branch that you can clone or you can either go back before you added Redux or uh, go ahead and just cut Redux out altogether. Okay, so with that said, um, the first thing that we changed was uh, how we got our token. So let's copy this. Um, and by the way, I'm just copying this off of the code on GitHub. This is our latest code. So instead of just getting a refresh token, we now get a new token and a user ID and pass the new token in here. And then the reason why we're getting those is because we changed our server and we get a token and a user ID now. Uh, I believe is how we did it, yep. Okay, and then the other place is in our new products. So in new products, we are now updating the cache. So let's go ahead and go over to new product and we're gonna paste this in um, right here. And so we also need to import products query. And we also need to grab some stuff from our mutation. So we can copy this. There we go. So these are all the fields we want to get from our product that we added. And then at the top, we're just going to import like we did before. So we're going to get this from products. And then in products, we just need to grab the seller ID from the products query, and then we just need to export this. And cool, we are now up to date uh, with the code. The only difference is we don't have Redux. So we're gonna do the same thing with Apollo link state. So I'm gonna just do git checkout, create a new branch, and I think I'm on 13. And this is just gonna be our base branch. I'm going to go ahead and add all this stuff, commit, uh, this is basically just removing Redux is what we just did um, on this branch. Okay, so go ahead and clone this branch if you would like to. Um, I'll have this code on GitHub, so branch 13 is where we're going to start off, and uh, yeah, let's add Apollo link state in this video. So here's Apollo link state, it's readme. And the first thing we're just going to do is just add it to our project. Uh, it's a separate library. It does not come with. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure it doesn't come with uh, our preset. We can double check this though. So we come in here with client. Yeah, it doesn't. So we're going to install this. And then you'll notice Apollo link state, we actually write the resolver. Uh, on our front end, so that's pretty cool. But I'm gonna open this up, yarn add, Apollo link state. So now it's added to our project, and I can go ahead and import it. And I'm just gonna copy the code uh, in the README because this is basically what we want to do. All right, so pretty simple stuff. We're grabbing a with client state from Apollo link state, so that's our import we're gonna use. Uh, they're creating another in memory cache. So, get rid of this, and we're gonna put it right here. Okay, so 
state link we actually are going to add to our client like this and if we look at the readme the way they do it is they say apollo link dot from and they put it in front of the http link so for us um, we don't have apollo link imported right now but we, it comes with the apollo client preset so we're just going to say apollo link and then for our link right here we can say Apollo link dot from and then we can pass in our array now I assume this is doing the same thing as uh, the concat here so what I'm gonna do is just put off link there now if this crashes we can go ahead and change this later um, but we have off link and then we also have our state link so we're just adding all our links in here so to create the link for our client, we add our state link, our off link, and then our HTTP link, which is an upload file link. So that's now in our client. And then what the heck is our state link doing over here, right? So we call with client state. And notice how we pass in a new cache, uh, similar to how we add a cache to the client. So we have two caches going on, um, one for uh, regular client and one for our uh, state. So here you'll notice we have resolvers, and this is just like how you would do it on the server side. Uh, you're gonna have a mutation, and uh, all right, what well, mutation do we wanna run, right? So for us, we want to add user, and we're just gonna grab a uh, user here, right? And for us, what's coming with the user is just a user ID. So we can say data, and what's the data, and I don't think, uh, so network status, I don't think the name matched up, right? So update network status is different than uh, network status. But you'll notice what we're gonna do is how do we call this mutation afterwards? We're gonna be adding a at client link so it knows not to make a server call. And it's in our client and you'll notice the name is matching up. So the name here matches up with our name and our mutation. And then our query over here, we can set defaults to which uh, for us is not really necessary to add a default, but we could. And then you'll notice how we're gonna write a query um, and we at client. But now notice this, this thing is called network status. Uh, and that's the name we use here. So this is the name of your mutation, this is the name of your query. So we can say uh, kit user um, is the data here. And then here it's gonna have a user and the type name is going to be a user. So we're going to be returning a user from this. So this is the name of your mutation. This is the name of your query. Remember this because we're going to be using it. And then you'll notice we're getting cached from what usually is the context, and then we're just writing that data. So pretty simple. So now we can call this mutation like we would call any other mutation. So on my check token page, right, I can add a mutation here. And I really want to... Uh, call this mutation after I get this. So we're, we're just gonna add another mutation, which is fine. So we're gonna say const add user mutation, and this is gonna be GQL. And now we're gonna be adding another one to GraphQL here. So we can either just stack them, but there's also a function called compose from a React Apollo. This just makes it a little bit cleaner to have multiple higher order components. So how it works is you have uh, all your higher order components passed to the compose function. So we're gonna have GraphQL there, and we're gonna have GraphQL again, add user. Um, add user mutation, that is. And then this is a little bit cleaner syntax, just compose GraphQL, GraphQL, and then it wraps all of those, um, and then it calls it on check token. Now there's a bit of a conflict because both of these are gonna add a uh, basically a thing called mutate in. So what we're gonna do is give them a name instead. So I can say name, and the name of this is gonna be add user. All right, so this looks good. We need to add our GQL data here, but now we can call this add user from our props. Okay, so here we're gonna say mutation, and we have a variable, right? Uh, if we come back over here, we know our variable is a user. Um, and 
in this case, we don't really need to call, make this a user. We could just say uh, user ID because that's all we need because uh, we need to have a type here, right? So I'm actually going to change that so it's just an integer. That way it's really easy here. Oops. Um, and actually before I do this, I want to make sure that this uh, does go ahead and work with at least this Apollo link from but yeah, so now let's just pass in a user ID. But you could have a user if there was more fields you wanted to add, right? So for us, our user is going to be, you know what, let's not even bother with that. Let's just say user ID. So we're gonna say just get user ID. And this is gonna be of the type name. Uh, this is really just an integer, so we'll say user ID. All right, so this looks pretty good here now. I'm gonna refresh to make sure that works. Uh, the only thing is our mutation is not filled out, so let's finish filling that out. So uh, add user ID, right? So let's change the name of that. And again, the name here matches the name we use here, so add user ID, let's get that matched up. And then the user ID is just gonna be the user ID we get from our variable, and then we don't really need to return anything. But again, remember to add the at client so it knows uh, this is not a regular mutation. So let's reload. Let's make sure things load. All right, so stuff loaded, good. So this Apollo link from works just fine. That's good. Okay, so I think this is this mutation is good to call. So after this, we have our user ID. So we can just say await this.props.add user ID. And then we're just going to pass in, right? So just like you would do anything else you pass in your variables so you'll, you'll notice this is just like using uh, Apollo client anywhere else and calling a mutation uh, so add user ID we just didn't name it that so let's change it all right cool so it added the user so how do we get this user ID right well how do you get anything from GraphQL or with Apollo uh, it's with a query so we want to get this from our products over here so we're going to add a query so we, we would like to get the uh, products and we also would like to get um, our user id so we could create a separate query but why not just have this bundled into one right so here we're going to get and remember use the same name so uh here it's going to be uh, get user ID, get user ID, and it's going to be returning an int, so there's really nothing to like, you know, grab from this. And actually, I want to change this because this is only an integer. Uh, we don't really need to add a type name. I think we can just do that. So the data is going to be get user ID, which returns an integer. So here I'm going to say uh, just get user ID, and this is going to be a client. I don't know if my syntax is quite right on this. It looks like it's wrong. Hey guys, so I figured out why I was getting that error and I kind of got it to a state where it partially works, but let's talk about what that means. So the first thing that I was doing very wrong was passing the cache. Okay, so I was passing a new cache to both the state and the client and instead we wanna create a cache up here and then pass them the same cache to both of them. But then after that, there seems to be a problem that emerges that has to do with Apollo link state. So in the products, what I did is I commented out products and I got rid of the at client. And then I'm just console logging to see if I get a user ID. And I do in fact get a user ID now, but to do that, what I had to do was pass in uh, a query right here and just a uh, function that returns an empty object uh, there's just this is like a little thing to f make it work and I notice this is a, not how the readme looks in the readme they say add uh, at client so it knows what's what right so that's that's the first weird thing but here's the thing notice how I commented out products right it doesn't work with running products there too uh, but notice when my mutation now I don't have to add a type name I can just pass it like this um, and also in my products or check token um, 
user ID is not an integer, it is a string. I forgot about that. That's not really causing us a, a problem, I don't think. Uh, but that was just one of the things that I forgot to switch. I keep forgetting that user ID is a string. I, I was thinking it was just an integer, like one, two, three, or whatever. Um, that wasn't really causing the problem. We don't have to add a type name, but notice what happens when, so, this is me when I add the client. Um, it'll break over here and we get missing field. So I don't know why. So like if I run this with products, it's we're gonna get the same problem. It's able to fetch the products, but it can't find this get user ID and I'm not sure why. And now if I get rid of that and run them both like this, it has trouble getting the user ID um, because we're not getting it from the server, right? We need to tell it to get it from link state. And I looked on uh, Apollo link state, I looked up some of these errors. It looks like there's an open issue about this and uh, maybe by the time you're watching this, this is all fixed, but there's a pull request about it. And uh, as I'm recording this five hours ago, it hasn't been accepted yet. Um, and it looks like there needs to be a change with it. But anyway, it looks like Apollo link state is not um, currently uh, good to go. Now I could just be doing this way wrong, so do let me know if you think I'm just, uh, this is an error on my part. I'm thinking it has to do with something with Apollo link state. I'm gonna wait for them to up their version and uh, go ahead and install their new code and then maybe that'll work. But what I think I'm gonna do is just leave this for now and then uh, I wasn't gonna finish out the rest of this video with Apollo link state either because I think Apollo link state and Redux are both overkill for this because really all we need is uh, to grab the user ID in one place, right, in the products. So I know this doesn't really work, but I'm thinking this is, has to do with Apollo link state. By the time you're watching this, maybe this will work out for you, so do give it a try. Um, yeah, but that's it for this video, guys. In the next one, I'll be showing you how to actually do this um, without any state management libraries, without Redux, without Apollo link state. Uh, but that's it. I'll see you guys then.